Well, we're going to get started. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this global learning session presented by Prime Stage Theater. Uh, we are here at Pine Richland High School in Gibsonia, Pennsylvania, uh, just outside of Pittsburgh. And uh, we are connected right now with two other schools. There will be uh, another school joining us later. Um, we have um, Winchester Thurston, which is a school in the Shady Side area of Pittsburgh. And we have the Liceo Scientifico. Huh? Is that okay? <laughs> in the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican Republic, about 1,500 miles away from here. Um, first of all, I want to, uh, to say a very big thank you to Mr. John Dolphin, wonderful teacher here. Yeah. Um, we're lucky to have the connection with Mr. Dolphin because he makes it possible for us to have this great facility out here at Pine Richland and he's a great friend of Prime Stage Theater and um, it's, he really, we would not be able to be here, literally would not be able to be here this morning without him. I also want to say uh, a thank you and a good morning to Linda Haston, our Education Director and to Wayne and Connie Brenda, who are, I, I have to say, they are the guiding lights behind Prime Stage Theater. And uh, the, their, their commitment to education is really the main reason that I am so involved with Prime Stage Theater. My name is Ken Lutz. Uh, I've been with Prime Stage in different ways for 15 years, something like that. Uh, I've been in I think I've been in 14 productions at this point, and I'm on the Teacher Advisory Committee, and, and I just, I love Prime Stage. So, um, a couple of things I want to say uh, before we get the ball rolling. Probably, you don't need to be told this, but it's, it's better to get things out in the open uh, before we start so that everybody knows. Um, we want, speaking to the, to the students now, we want to make sure that everyone is on their absolute best behavior this morning. Um, I know that you will be. It's, it's really important that, that the rooms that we are in be quiet. Because, uh, you know, when you listen to something on headphones, it's really loud and clear and it blocks out other noise. But when you're in a large room like this, uh, the acoustics can make it very difficult to understand what people are saying. Uh, there's echo and uh, noises of people shuffling their feet and dropping papers. It makes it really difficult to understand. We also uh, don't all speak the same language natively and that can make things difficult too. So we want it to be um, as, as quiet as possible. Uh, phones should be off. I saw Mr. Dolphin telling people to like throw their phones in the trash can. No, not, not quite. But, um, it, it, we don't want uh, interference, electronic or otherwise, from phones. Um, keep in mind that obviously this session today is being live streamed and recorded, which is great because if you guys go home and you say to your parents, oh, we did this great thing today in school, we got to talk to students at other schools and we had this wonderful discussion and your parents say, oh, I wish I, I could have seen it, you can say, you can, because your teachers are going to get a link, and if they click on that link, it'll take you to an archived recording of this session. Of course, there's a downside also, because anything that happens is recorded, and it'll be there on the internet forever, right? <laughs> so you never know when the camera may be on you, and so if, if you're sitting there going, <laughs> right, that's probably not the image that you want uh, <laughs> that you want sitting out there on the internet. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so why are we here? Well, Prime Stage Theater, which is a professional theater company in Pittsburgh, is doing a production of In the Time of the Butterflies. And you know that's, that's based on the wonderful novel by the same name by Julia Alvarez. Uh, the production opens next weekend, right? A week from today. Friday night, March 8th. Mm -hmm. Today's March 1st. Yes. So, um, we are basing this, uh, this session on In the Time of the Butterflies. And we'll 
we'll get to see some things and talk about uh, the, the, the story and the book versus the play um, as the morning goes on. So uh, I want to um, introduce the schools to each other. Uh, Mr. Dolphin, do we have somebody, do we have a designated person to? Uh, Go ahead, hi, me. Okay, <laughs> so if you would like, now the camera is right there. Um, if you would like to just tell everyone a little bit um, about your school, uh, about your community, what you had for breakfast, anything, you know, it's, <laughs> that would be fine. Um, start with your name and your grade. Nice and loud. Okay, uh, hi, my name is Jaime. Uh, for breakfast, I had my huevos con chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, we're Pine Richland. Go ahead. Oh, we're Pine Richland. Uh, we're in is it Gibsonia? Yeah, the Gibsonia part of Pittsburgh. I think we're pre we're a pretty big school, right? How many people do we have? We have four hundred. Sixteen hundred people. So I think we're pretty big. And um, I don't. I I personally love this school. There's a lot of opportunities here. And yeah, basically it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So. The Liceo Scientifico, uh, the teacher there is Ms. Yadira Picardo, and you have someone picked out. Introduce yourself, yeah, please. Yes, Caroline. Guys, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Caroline. I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh, 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 Time of the Butterflies. How many of you have read the book? Yeah, you're not being honest, I know, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a very, it's a very wonderful book. Um, and the, the subject matter is, um, is pretty serious, but, but the book has a lot of, uh, a lot of lighthearted sections. There's a lot of joy in the book, as well as a lot of tragedy. Um, it, the story is about four sisters in the Dominican Republic back in the middle of the 20th century. And the Dominican Republic was ruled at that time, and I do mean ruled, by a brutal dictator named Rafael Trujillo. And uh, he, he ruled with an iron fist. Uh, there was very little freedom uh, for the people. And, you know, people only, uh, only put up with that for so long before things start to happen. And so these four sisters uh, were kind of in the, the forefront of speaking out and eventually actually taking part in sort of revolutionary activities to, to get rid of this dictator. Um, and three of the four sisters, at one point, were overtaken by, uh, by uh, military uh, people from the regime, and they were killed. They were beaten and killed. Uh, the fourth sister, uh, Dede, if, if you read the book, did not go with them that day, and so she survived. So that's what the story is about. 
Uh, you may know that the United Nations uh, named, uh, or, or rather designated, November 25th as the uh, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. That was done in honor of the Mirabal sisters. So that's, that's the story. And the, the book by Julia Alvarez has been um, adapted into a stage play which is going to be produced by Prime Stage, as I said, next week. So we have some of the actors from Prime Stage here. And they're going to do a scene a little later on. Uh, but uh, right now, we're going to have students from Pine Richland and from the Dominican Republic. They're going to do their own version of, uh, of part of the story. So, uh, Mr. Dolphin, do you want to introduce her? Or are they going to introduce themselves? All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, John Dolphin. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Okay. Hello. Um, what we do, <laughs> hi. Um, what we do every year is um, I have the kids. We've got a group of nine this year, and what I do is sort of task them with read the book. And what do you think the most important scene is in there, or the most important event? And inevitably, those of you kids who have worked with me in the past, we get nine kids, we get nine people going, wait, it's about. So this year, I think uh, there's, their play is going to be kind of self-explanatory, but they um, focused it around sort of one word focuses, an emotional word that each one of them took from the book and they put together um, this brief little uh, uh, play, this scene for you guys, okay? Can we get the camera to look over there? She's got it. Okay. See you guys, so what are you guys up for lunch? I'm not too sure yet. Hey Brandon. Brandon, 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 did you take the test? Yeah. Was it hard? Yeah, it didn't go too well. Was it long? Yeah, I, I, I have no idea what was even on it. Wait, which book was this test about? Was it, it um, Time of the was, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That book is so stupid. Like, why do we even have to read it? Yeah. I mean, there's too many characters. I mean, you can't even keep up with the story, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of disagree. I think the book is about the choices that we make in life and the choices that the sisters had to make. I think that maybe their choices were more difficult than the choices that we make, but in the end, that's what it comes down to, is the choices we make make us the people that we are. Yeah, I totally see what you're talking about, Lauren, but I think it relates more to the idea of family, like the ties that you can only ever have with the people that you ha have in a family. Like, there's the, there's the family that builds within the resistance as they all fight against the tyranny. And then there's also the, the idea of love defying hatred because, though not in quite the same way, but at the start when Data was getting ready to be interviewed, she was so frustrated that she was getting interviewed about these people who idolized her sisters, but she still loved them despite it. And I see it in my own family, like, my dad's family isn't very close, but they still, when something really big happens, we all group together and support each other no matter what's going on. Yeah, yeah, Emily, I see what you mean. See, when I was reading the book, I saw it more about empathy, not only in family, but also in friends. Like, whenever Sineta tells Minerva about how her family's been killed by Tadrulo, Minerva goes and puts away her photo of them to show that she cares about her. And I see that in my friends and family as well. You're absolutely right, Chase, and even with these ideas of empathy, you get people taking their own desires and setting them aside for the sake of others. Just as Minerva said to Maria Teresa how she was doing this so that she could have a better life so, and was putting aside any selfish desires she might have had in order to keep her family safe and for a greater cause. Yeah. Elena, I get what you're saying, but I think it's more about sacrifice. They sacrifice their well-being. They fight against the political tyranny. 
And by fighting against that, they sacrifice themselves even though, and for me, I have to sacrifice for my dreams. Wait, Madison, I think you're onto something. Through this sacrifice, they went through a lot of struggle. I mean, imagine what the Mirabal sisters would have to face after going through family betrayal, political opposition, and um, a powerful uh, tyrant who, um, they must have felt powerless against all of these uh, problems. And in our lives, like, we face a lot of struggle too. I mean, this test is going to be pretty hard. Jaime, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on to something. <laughs> Everybody here has a different idea of what is good and what is evil. For centuries and decades, people have told stories and myths and legends about good versus evil. And it seems like everybody wants to be that good in the world. And people want to make a difference and change the world for the better. I completely agree with what you're saying, Brandon, because even though we have all different views of what good and evil are, this story is really about connections and how we can connect with people based on our own experiences and views. For example, during this story and during the time period in which this takes place, oppressive regimes in Cuba and Germany also existed. And we see that people can connect with each other on uh, either horrible or positive experiences, and we can all connect with each other because of our pain and come together over that, even if it doesn't seem to make sense. See, I agree with you, Riley, but honestly, I think it's mainly about understanding because when Sunita tells Minerva, Minerva about how Trujillo killed her family, Minerva has to think about her own experiences and relate them and understand. And I can relate to this as well because whenever my grandfather died, I would tell people about my experiences and they would relate it to theirs. And this helped us all understand each other better. Guys, do you see what we all just did there? It was your story and your story and your story all together. They all go together. Yeah, and there are no boundaries in the world. There's no age boundaries. There's no geographic boundaries. Yeah, no cultural boundaries, no time boundaries. Exactly. It's just like what Riley said earlier about how it was happening in Germany and Cuba all at the same time. Wait, wait, guys. I think what we're, what we're trying to say is we're really all the same. I mean, I think you're right. I think the whole theme of this story is how in humanity, no matter where we are or when we are or who we are, we all feel the same emotions. That was great. That was so great. Thank you, guys. Wow. Thank you. That was That was wonderful. Well, a little later, we're going to talk about how you did that, how you put it together. So, does everybody notice all the, the butterflies on the wall? Yeah. On the floor as well? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. That was delightful. All right. So now we're going to turn to the Dominican Republic and the students at the Liceo Científico. And if you would uh, introduce, uh, give us a little information of what it is you're doing, and, and let's, uh, let's see your presentation. Hi, my name is Pamela, and I will introduce our So we have two cents that is being phenomenal, because here you can witness how powerful Korea was, and also how involved it was in the life. So uh, in this scene that we are going to do, you can see how, how, how like the tension that was, and also how factors it started to fit. So we have Chris playing as Trujillo, Rosani as Minerva's mother, and Alia as Minerva. So in this part there in Trujillo's office, Minerva is asking for her father's freedom. Um, also, we have to say that Trujillo was like some, not in love, but he was infatuated with Minerva. So that's the reason of why he invited her to the, to the dance. So here we're going to see it now. 
Dr. Mirabal there? You said that he... he uh, no, Dr. Jaime is not here yet. I'm okay. hoping he might arrive. I don't know okay. whether I will be later. I don't know. Okay. Can I tell them about him, or would you like to tell them? No, you can tell them about him. That's fine. Okay, well... Go ahead. So, we got to see last week a gentleman by the name of Dr. Jaime David Mirabal who, if I, if I remember correctly, he was uh, largely responsible for the existence of your school. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So, you know the character, Dede? Mm -hmm. He's her son. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is her son. And uh, uh, Ms. Picardo said to me, oh, yeah, he's here all the time. He just comes in and out, and we get to see him all the time. So... That's pretty cool. And here's another thing. The character Minerva, her daughter, Minu, is going to be here in Pittsburgh next weekend for the opening of the Prime Stage production. So if you guys are able to come to see the show next weekend, you may get to, to meet or, or talk with or see her daughter. So there, you know, it's it's a story, but it's it's based on reality, based on real people. Okay, so um, at this point, I want to introduce the other two schools who, um, who have been watching. We're really glad that they were able to get here as early uh, as they did. We weren't sure that that, that was going to be possible. So uh, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to um, uh, call the names of the other two schools. Make sure you um, unmute your microphone. 
Um, let's start with Alderdice and Ms. Minna Levinson. Do you have a student who, who's going to say a few words to us? Okay, can you um, can you tell us a little bit about your school or your, your community? Sure. Um, we're in the neighborhood of Spurgeon Hill. Uh, and our school is a very diverse school. Class has around 350 students uh, in every grade. We have the same schedule every day. Um, in our Spanish class, we have very good discussion, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Um, uh, by the way, make sure that you mute your microphone. You probably already just did. Um, by the way, uh, Alderdice is kind of familiar to me because I taught there for 14 years, oh, wow. a long time ago. <laughs> Go dice. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's switch now to Winchester Thurston, Miss Susan Freudenberg, I believe. Do you have a, a student there who's going to talk to us? Um, my name is Anissa. Um, we are Winchester Thurston. We're in Shady Side in Pittsburgh. Um, our school is pretty small. We have like. 300 kids total and like 9 through 12. Uh, and it's really nice and kind here. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. We're so glad to have uh, all the schools present this morning. Well, we have a, a real honest to goodness treat for you now because we have uh, some of the actors from the prime stage production of In the Time of the Butterflies. And they're going to, I guess, talk to you a little bit. They're going to introduce themselves, and they're going to do something from the production. So uh, Mr. Enrique Bazan, would you like to come up and tell us about the group? Hola, hola, buenas, buenos días, buenas tardes. Hello, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Hola. Me, me llamo Enrique Bazán y estoy en la junta directiva de Prime Stage. My name is Enrique Bazán. I'm, on the, I'm one of the board of director members of Prime Stage. Y también estoy presentando en la obra teatral con el papel de Trujillo. And I'm also playing Trujillo in The Time of the Butterflies with Prime Stage uh, starting next week. Uh, for the people at uh, Winchester, Winchester Thurston and Alderice High School, welcome. Uh, Liceo Científico en Dominicana, es un gran gusto, un gran honor poder saludarlos y poder tener este intercambio con ustedes. Es muy especial para nosotros. Estamos muy entusiasmados. <laughs> eh, we're going to do a scene. Vamos a presentar una, una escena de la obra. A short scene from the show. In this scene, we have the Mirabal sisters discussing the upcoming event that Trujillo has invited them to. So, las hermanas Mirabal tienen que ir a un baile a las que lo ha invitado Trujillo. Uh, if I can have the cast members come up, all of you guys, please. Voy a presentar el elenco. Solamente tres personas van a actuar. Just three sisters are going to do the scene, but I wanted you to see at least the cast that we have here. And Liceo Científico gave me a very good idea of uh, everybody just saying their name. So, I'm Enrique. Hola, soy Cristal Rivera. Hola, soy Evelyn Hernández. Hola, soy Vanessa Vivas. Hola, soy Víctor. Hola, soy Susana García Barragán. And so, um, the scene, like I said, is going to be just the sisters, so not all of us, but uh, we all want to say hello to you. Hola. Hola. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, okay, so, like I said, in this scene, we're going to have Cristal Rivera with the role of Patria, Evelyn Hernández in the role of Minerva, 
and Vanessa Vivas in the role of Dede. Uh, take it away, ladies. Yeah. And just so you know, uh, Evelyn and Cristal son Dominicanas. Ellas ambas son Dominicanas. They're Dominican. And Vanessa is from Venezuela. I wish I didn't have to go to this swell party. Don't we all? You know Dad can't refuse. If only we could kill El Jefe! Quiet! You don't want to get Dad into trouble. It's the last thing he needs. Dad wants to protect us, but what does he do? He hides things. He has nothing to hide. Vigilio's been writing to me. Letters and letters, and Dad's been- That's not possible. I found them. He had them stashed away. I found the letters. Rummaging around in Dad's things. Yes, and why not? I'm sure Dad only wanted the to- The best for me. Dad just wants to protect you. Leo Morales is- An enemy of the state. And if I'm in communication with him, I'm also an enemy. And if Trujillo finds out, he'll send me to prison. Well, I'd rather go to prison. Minerva. What can I do here? What can I accomplish here? Sinita and all my other friends are in college already. You'll May go you... to law school soon enough. When? Leo wants to share his future with me. In his letter- Dad is just trying to do the Dad right thing. wants to keep me cooped up here. Daddy's little girl. Well, I'm not his little girl anymore. I am not. Go, Chale! That's the scene. Thank you, ladies. Gracias. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Saludos a todos. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So I hope that some of the students at the different schools are going to have a chance to come and see that Prime Stage production that opens next week. It's going to be great. So I have some questions, um, and I hope the Prime Stage actors will feel free to, to join in the discussion. Um, but the, the questions are aimed at the, the students, especially the, the students who, who prepared these scenes. Um, would any of you, this is so weird, like I'm talking to them, but the camera is here. Um, <laughs> would any of you like to talk about what went into preparing your scene? How did you decide what scene to do? Uh, or how did you decide what, what, the, what form the presentation should take? Um, were there any problems in, in working that out? Or was it easy? Uh, anybody want to volunteer? Go, Brandon. Yeah, so All right. Hi, I'm Brandon. Uh, so we started this probably about three weeks ago. We all met in Mr. Dolphin's classroom, actually. And we, before that, we all decided to read the book, and we all did, hopefully. And when we did it, we all got together and decided what we thought was the most important scene, theme, or element of the book. And of course, we all had differing opinions. And when we uh, decided the decided that there's no correct answer, that everybody's opinion is correct in itself. And we decided when we made our scene that everybody's opinion should be expressed. For example, I believe that the moral or the theme of the story was good versus evil, whereas every other person that performed with me thought of something else. But so when we decided that, we decided that in the end, everybody, or it's everybody's opinion that really is what creates the story. Everybody has different experiences and different elements that make them who they are. And who they are really contributes to who, to what the story is really about. So that's how we decided that the best way to create something as a whole is to start out as something really broken up at first, but together in the end it comes together. Thank you.
Ah, okay. Anybody else from Pine Ridge? Lake? How about from Liceo Scientifico? Anybody want to talk about how you uh, how you came up with your presentation or what you know what problems were there? Sorry. <laughs> Is your microphone on? Okay. Mind uh, coming closer to the microphone and saying that again. Okay. Could you come come close to the microphone and say it again? There we go. Uh, okay. Okay. So my name is Ellie, <clears throat> and we should that because it thought that in show it will pick up us three. And Thank you so much. We're having some, some little connectivity problems, but, but that was great. We appreciate that. Um, how about the Prime Stage cast? What are some of the things that, that you had to figure out or some of the, the, the things that you had to tackle in preparing your character and preparing the show. I can start just with the intro. Sure. You can want to follow me. Oh, Hola otra vez. Hi again. Guys, just so you know, for, for this production, it was really important for us just to prepare that we have a cast that has Latinos and Latinas. Uh, you know, in Pittsburgh, uh, predominantly, it's, there are not many Latinos in this city, but it was very important for Prime Stage from the start that we just have Latinos, Latinas in the cast, especially the Mirabal sisters. Uh, Wayne Brenda, Connie Brenda wanted to have Latin actors uh, portraying these historical characters. So th that was very important for us to tell the story. And I can only say that we are just very proud that we do have a Latin cast. And, and even as a bonus, we have you know, Minerva and Patria as Dominicanas. So we are very fortunate to have that. And we really wanted that to be, even before we start rehearsals, we wanted that to be in place. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Um, definitely the process is um, one that was very difficult and emotional. Um, so something that we did was really bond. For the sisters, we had a day of just rehearsing and creating the bond that we believed that they had with each other and just doing exercises that would bring us closer to each other. Algo que nosotros hicimos cuando dos hermanas tenemos un rehearsal. Yo no sé cómo dice esa palabra en español. Ensayo. Yeah, it's definitely been a journey, especially to be the sister who does not go with them for the revolution, uh, because there are things that, she loves her sisters so much, but there's something holding her back. There's something that's tradition and family that keeps her from being a political activist, per se. But what's so beautiful about the story that I absolutely love is that she stayed alive to raise her sister's children. Mm -hmm. Like, that is beautiful to me, because that is legacy, and that is that they still being part of the revolution, even though she wasn't, she didn't give her life for it. And algo que me gusta mucho de la historia de, en el tiempo de las mariposas, es que Dede no dio su vida, para la revolución, pero que se quedó aquí porque quería, porque crió a las hijas de sus hermanas, a sus sobrinas, como si fueran hijos de ellas. Entonces fue 
eh, el legado y la familia, que fue lo más importante, porque de, de, aún es parte de la revolución. Y bueno, yo creo que sí dio su vida porque ella vivió para contar la historia, para que la historia no se repita nunca más. Eh, she did, she did give her life because she devoted her, her own dreams and life as the, you were talking about sacrifices. Yeah. She sacrificed her life uh, because uh, she raised all the kids So that's, that was very important for her. And she... Oh, she, she oh sorry. It's okay now. Oh, oh okay, okay. Well, uh, I think that they, uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very important part because she actually did, in my eyes, she did give her, her, dedicated her life and took it upon herself to raise the, the children. Uh, so she went from having a kid to having nine. <laughs> and then she uh, dedicated her entire life to tell the story so people would know exactly what happened and then so people would remember what happened and the story would not repeat itself. Mm -hmm. uh, she passed away in 2014 still telling the story so uh, her part is I think is very very moving uh, in that way. Something that gives me great pride as an actor of color, um, un actor latino, is being able to tell our stories, um, even stories that I had no idea existed until you're given this platform and this opportunity. Um, siendo americano, es bien fácil de olvidarte um, de las historias que vienen de las islas de donde venimos. Y es bien importante para recordar de donde tú vienes y de donde um, puede aprender algo nuevo y empezar teniendo la conversación porque esta historia no es, es bien recibida en, en el mundo entero y hay muchos que no, no saben que esta tragedia pasó en, en, la, en el país de la República Dominicana. Um, so in the world there are tons of people that have no idea that this story even happened um, and there are lots of um, perspectives and different stories that we learn as Americans and just like people on this earth of different things and we don't learn about this, so it's really important to start that conversation. And with doing shows like In the Time of the Butterflies, it incites people to have that um, foundation and want to learn different perspectives and different things that happen just beyond our everyday lives. Um, hola. <laughs> uh, yo estoy muy feliz participando en este show con esta gente que son maravillosa. Okay. Um, but I'm also very proud, um, not only as a Dominican, but just to be able to represent um, Minerva Mirabal, who I just absolutely, absolutely adore. She's freaking amazing. But that being said, um, like everyone said, I mean, they said it better than I could have. It was such an important part of history. And um, the thing about history is that in many ways it does repeat itself but every time we can learn something new from it. Mm -hmm. And being able to represent this show, especially in Pittsburgh, um, I think it's important. Um, you know, like you were saying, it, it forces us to have these conversations that I think um, even during the time of the internet now, we're still afraid to have these conversations and we shouldn't be. We should be able to come together, even if we have difference of opinions, um, it still merits something, it's still valid. So I think just having people who can say, okay, I value your opinion, what can you bring to the table? Um, it means the world to me. So I'm proud to be able to share that story with my fellow castmates. And on behalf of the other actors here, I can say that I am very much impressed with the work that these students behind us and the yes. students in 100%. the Dominican yeah. Republic did. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It's given me something to think about and I'm galvanized and can't wait to bring it into the rehearsal room and on stage. Thank you so yes. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's that was great. Uh, by the way, why the why the title? What's what's with the butterflies? What's the significance of that? Okay. Oh. Do you, do you want to say something or ask something? Yes, we wanted to actually thank you guys. Aww. Aww. Um, nosotros queremos agradecerle. 
que es un honor para nosotros que se hayan interesado en nuestra historia. No sé si se dieron cuenta que el liceo científico se encuentra en la provincia de Hermanas Mirabal, provincia que lleva el nombre de esas tres hermanas que lucharon por nuestra patria. La verdad es que quizás para ustedes, ustedes conocieron esta historia mediante un libro, The Time of the Butterfly, pero la verdad es que nosotros técnicamente la vivimos porque fue en nuestra provincia. De verdad que le queremos dar gracias por eso. I feel so thankful because you are interested in our story and that's our problem, it's our history and knowing about la our Latin roots is so important and most of us didn't know that, for example, this day was because of that sisters or another important things that passed that day. So we are so thankful because you are interested about like searching and looking for more information about that important sisters and that important event. Can you repeat the question that you said before, please? Why the butterflies? Why the butterflies? Oh, oh, like yeah, yeah. So what's the significance of the butterflies? Well, here they were as in as in the book that not as well they said that some people tell the, the butterflies, but the secret name in the organization was butterflies. They called them like that in their houses and in their community. They called the sisters the butterflies. That's why they call them also butterflies, and they keep like that. It's just like it's a, it's like. It's not that big, it's just because like a nickname they had and then when they form that important organization, they keep that name as a secret name. So, so it keeps like butterflies. So it was, it actually was kind of a code word because they were secretly working against the government and they wanted, they needed to keep their identity secret at times. So yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Miss Picardo, we had yesterday we talked about something that I I was really uh, blown away when you said that there are people in the Dominican Republic who don't necessarily see the Mirabal sisters as heroes or heroines. Yes, that's correct. They kind of well, I heard gossip, what we call it here, gossip, that they're actually seen as indecent women. But it could be because it's such a patriarchal society that to have women as heroines is like not accepted <laughs> if it's not a man. Yeah, I, I think that's amazing when when I mean to us, to me, they are they are ultimate heroines or heroes. And it's it's yes. uh, that's quite surprising. Okay, so um, we don't have a lot of time left, but um, I, I did want to bring up one subject, and, and Wayne will understand, he knows me, this is just for me. Um, do we have any, any baseball fans? Yeah. Yes? I don't see this, and the, the students there are not raising their hands. Okay. No. All right, so, <laughs> all right, I just, I want to throw out a couple of names and see if they, if it rings a bell. Does anybody recognize the name Starling Marte? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How how about how about Gregory Polanco? Yeah, Gregory. <laughs> okay. So the reason I'm saying this is that our baseball team here in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, have a number of players who are from the Dominican Republic. Those two, Starling Marte. Sterling Marte is probably the best all-around player on the Pirates team. Gregory Polanco is one of their star players. And I don't know if, if the students in the Dominican are aware of American baseball, but these guys are multimillionaires. I mean, uh, um, 
Starling Marte is on a five-year contract worth $31 million. $6 million a year, approximately. And, and they are American heroes. And of course, the Pirates, like most major league teams, have a very strong presence in the Dominican Republic. They have a training facility there, and they recruit. And I'm just, I'm, I'm interested in knowing whether the, the, our students in the Dominican have any, um, any knowledge of that. Apparently not. <laughs> no, not our students, but our teachers. Um, I have a teacher here that he does, he's a baseball fan, and he, he, he does know the name. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I know about them. Uh, well, basically, because they're from the province, and my name is my sister. Um, yeah, what, what can I tell you about it? Good. Yeah. That's, that's enough. And uh, it's interesting also that you just mentioned that. Uh, I don't know if our students here, or we still have Alderdice. Uh, yeah, we still have Alderdice, but not Winchester. Um, would you tell them, again, the, the name of the province where your school is located? Yeah. Herman, uh, the province is Hermanas Mirabal. So they're living in, a, in an area, a province, I guess that's like a county yeah. in, in America. They're living in, in, in a place that is named after the Mirabal sisters. So another question that I had for the students there, um, I know that, and I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not insulting our, our students here uh, at our two schools, but I, most American students don't have a real strong um, understanding or knowledge of American history. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah, they're saying yes. So what I'm wondering is, for the students at the Liceo Scientifico, you're living right there where it happened, and you're living in a place that's named in honor of these sisters. How, um, how aware are you of this whole story and the, and the, and the whole history of it? Is it something you, that's common knowledge, or is it something your teachers have to have to talk about with you? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to answer that question. Well, first of all, yes. Uh, and uh, in history, social science is part of our curriculum. So the students uh, should be aware of our history, and it's a really uh, important event in our life. So that's the reason why the uh, Ministry of Education said that all the students, Dominican students, should know about this. Okay, that's cool. All right, um, so we're getting close to 11 o'clock when the session is supposed to officially end. Um, I don't know if the, if the different schools or the students here at Pine Richland um, will have to leave. We can leave the connection open for a while if, if they want to talk. But um, before, we, before we sign off, I was wondering if, if any of the students at any of the schools would like to ask a question of any of the students at the other schools or, or uh, make a comment or anything. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. They're so shy. Yeah. 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 Teenagers are so shy. Not. I don't know. Okay. It's okay. Let's just like, it's open. Okay. They're shy here, too. They're shy. Okay. Well, I want to tell you that it's, this has been uh, a, a tremendous pleasure and an honor for me. Um, I want to remind the, uh, the students at Alderdice, oh, I guess they're going, well, the students at Pine Richland, uh, that um, next weekend, in the time of the butterflies, Prime Stage Theater opens. Um, there are student matinees. Mr. Dolphin, are they going to come to a matinee, maybe? Or? They are all aware, and we're, we won't be, not the, maybe the matinee in the um, uh, weekend matinee, but not during the week. Great. Okay. 
So I want to say thank you to the Crime Stage actors. Thank you so much. And thank you to our, our two host teachers, Ms. Picardo and Mr. Dolphin here at Pine Richland. Thank you so much. And I hope we can do this again sometime soon. Great. Yeah.